Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do God's will. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple of hundred years ago, Thomas Jefferson did a bit of an experiment, and he took the Bible, specifically the Gospels, and cut out from it, took like an exacto knife almost, all the verses that referred to anything that was supernatural, whether it was of Jesus' miracles or the resurrection, and what was left was a collection of just these like moral sayings from Jesus, kind of reducing our Lord to a good moral teacher what we call the Jefferson Bible. If you Google it, you can find out what, uh, what it is. And it was the kind of the trend in that time with scientific advancements and period of enlightenment and philosophy to just kind of do away with everything that was supernatural. It was, and it, it's kind of a sense of how our world operates today, right? It's from that mindset that if you can't physically see something or, or analyze it under a microscope, most people think it's not real. And so probably the scripture passages of today would not have made the Jefferson Bible. But we, even as Catholics, we swim in this culture, right? We swim in that, in that culture of seeing is believing. You know, we live through it. So I think we can sometimes inadvertently, we might fall in that mindset as well sometimes. And so I think this feast day is very important for us. It's a great reminder that there's something else out there. It's a great reminder that we're, that we're not alone. You know, God created the guardian angels to watch over us and to guide us and to protect us. They're God's messengers for us. And there's one aspect that really stood out to me today as I was preparing this homily, and that's this aspect of guardian, well, of, of guarding. Well, it's guardian angels, I guess, so let's talk about that. In the first reading, the Lord says, I'm going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared, to guard you. And in the response, we're some, the angels of the Lord will guard you in all your ways. So it's important for us to reflect that, right? That reflect on that. Do we believe that? Do we always behave and think that this is a reality, that we have a guardian angel, someone with us. You know, I think sometimes we forget, right? We get lonely or we get anxious. We think that we can do everything on our own or that we have to do everything on our own. But the reality that, is that there's a whole other realm of created beings known as angels. They see God's face and he assigns them to each of us, to each one of us to guard us, to be with us on his behalf. Sometimes when we doubt in their presence, it's good to remind ourselves maybe of little stories that have happened. I've got a few here, perhaps a couple of personal anecdotes, if you permit me. I remember a couple of years ago, maybe more than a couple, more like 10 years ago, I was driving down the 417. Might have been, like I said, 10 years ago, coming back from Cornwall late at night, and I was trying to pass a car in the passing lane. I was in the passing lane and the car was in the right lane here. But the car beside me, as I was passing him, sped up. If you do that, don't do that. That's not nice. But anyway, so, uh, so the car started speeding up as I was trying to pass him. 
He didn't want to let me pass him. So after five minutes of, you know, kind of back and forth like this, I kind of just finally, you know what, I'm going to give up. I'm going to go back into my own lane. And when, as soon as I went back into my own lane behind that car, a second later, big moose in the passing lane. I could have hit him. It could have been a lot different of an ending, right? Another story, I was working in a chemistry lab. Some people will might remember this story because they were here. And uh, when I was uh, doing my doctoral, doctoral studies and uh, I was setting up an experiment, making sure everything was okay. And then I stepped away for a second, just like this. And boom, the whole thing exploded. It could have exploded in my face. That could have ended a lot differently too, right? Anyway, these are just a few little stories that, you know, they make me think, you know, wow, I'm not alone. Someone's out there watching for me. My guardian angel was working overtime both those days. Now, it's not magic. Our guardian angels aren't, you know, magic, right? There are people who, who, are, who do suffer accidents and all that. It's not automatic. But it is comforting for us to know that the, lo the Lord watches over us constantly through our guardian angels, in good times and in bad. So maybe a bit of homework today. I don't often give you homework, but maybe think of those times in your own life where, you know, yeah, my guardian angel was there that day. That could have ended a lot differently. Give thanks to God for them and know that you're never alone. Amen.